Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Techtopia playthrough. This is Tango. How are you guys doing today? We <laughs> I love watching the bard. The bard makes me so happy. Uh, today, what are we doing today? I think today we're going to continue to grow this village out super huge. And we're going to focus on a school. And... <laughs> Love that little ditty. Uh, we're gonna focus on a school, I think, because we have lots of hearts. I want to get. We're gonna have a lot of kids. It's gonna be like a, a kindergarten around here in a few minutes. We're gonna get tons of kids going around, and we're gonna get a school. We're gonna get a teacher, uh, and I think if we have time, we're gonna get an enchanter today as well too, and get the enchanter working in the library. So the school is the last. Uh, the, is the last structure that we don't already have. I think so. After that. It's gonna be just like increasing what we already have. What did that? What did that butcher just do? I fixed the. I'm, I'm gonna go over a lot of the changes too that I've made. Um, we got a couple new great features I want to show you, and a lot of really good bug fixes. We're gonna go over some of the changes I made in a little bit more detail than we normally do, but then I'll also show you all the change lists. Uh, but yeah, today's gonna be good. Schools, kids, enchanters, and lots of new features. All right, let's kick things off with a brand new day here. I'm standing outside the town hall, and I'm about to show you the most amazing thing ever, ever. Okay. You, you, you never, ever thought this one was coming, but it is here. It is finally here. The tradesman has his own pants now. <laughs> He's upgraded. He's not a clone. And I love him. I love this guy with his little flannel shirt and his little utility belt. I don't know what that is. Looks like some kind of device or tool hanging out of his belt. We'll go with that, but he's amazing now. So yeah, and I also, while I while I was upgrading him, you'll see they also wander around now. They should even uh, sit in chairs. Oh, that guy's a little stutter step right there. That's weird. Um, they, should, they should sit in chairs and stuff. So some of the chairs I got here, you know, kind of actually have a purpose now. So really good stuff. But I also had like a little, I don't want to say it's a bug, but something in here I had to change because the ceilings are so high in here. I changed the maximum ceiling height of all structures, the interior ceiling height from 15 to 30. So basically like the floor, the town hall was ending like right there. That's why you never saw them sit, buddy, sit. I want to see you sit, be like a good dog. <laughs> that you never saw them like go past this spot right here because after that the ceiling got too high and the room actually ended. Like the, the AI didn't even know that the floor ended right there. So I, I bumped up to 30. So now you can see they're loving the taking full Full, uh, full advantage of the full expanse of this beautiful town hall. But I, I want to see him sit. That's our goal this episode. We're actually see one of these guys sit. I might need to up the chances of that. Ooh, so many good vegetable trades today. We got like potatoes. I think we got some carrots. I'm gonna trade a whole bunch of. We got, uh, let's see, where was it? Uh, beets. And we basically, we got the whole trifecta here, except there's all of them. So a quadfecta. I have no idea. That's not even a word. Okay, so there is another new system. Now, this is a big one. I've added, this week, I added a food variety system. So, what this means now is the happiness that your villagers receive from food will now be dependent on how often they've eaten that food recently. So, basically, each villager is going to keep track of a list. The last five meals they've eaten will be maintained for each villager. And when they evaluate what foods they want to eat next, they're going to check how many times that food is on that list and each time it's on that list the happiness they receive from it will decline just a little bit so it all sounds complicated basically the simple the simplification of it is the more you eat the same food the less happiness you're going to gain from it and when you eat new foods you're going to gain a little benefit so i'm going to put some numbers on the screen right now and you're going to see so if the number of times the food you're eating is on that list is zero, you're actually gonna get an extra five happiness. I say you, the, the villager will get an extra five happiness from eating that food. So variety is the spice of life. And then as you continue to eat that same food, you see the numbers go down. It's like zero, negative three, negative seven, negative 12, and then crazy negative 18. But don't worry, okay? Don't worry, don't see that negative 18 and panic because the final happiness that you can receive uh, from eating any food is negative three. So if you eat the same food all day, every day, you're just like, I'm just a carrot guy, give me all the carrots, right? Eventually, you're just gonna get nothing but negative three, negative three, negative three happiness from those carrots. So. This is kind of, a, you know, it, it's encouraging food diversity. All your villagers should eat a much bigger variety of food now, which is good. The chef is going to be more, even more important now because he's going to have to make all kinds of different foods. But it means like the second you put meat in the storage room, all your villagers aren't just going to go like, oh, meat, meat for days. You know, meat is still good, of course, but, you know, they, they're going to eventually if they eat meat and meat and they're like steak, steak, steak. Eventually that steak's going to be like, this isn't making me happy anymore. Right. And they're going to go snag a baked potato or a loaf of bread or whatever it is. So 
variety. Variety is a good thing. So here is another thing I added just last night, in fact, and this one I'm super pleased. It's something I've been wanting to add for a long time now. As you start to walk outside your village and start to get close to the border of your village, you should see a little border wall appear there. Basically, I hijacked some of the world border code and put a little, you know, it's a lot more subtle than the world border that doesn't go up to 256 or whatever crazy, but it gives you an idea of where the edge of the outline of your village is. And it's going to do this on all four sides. This is super helpful. It's going to tell you, like, first of all, it's going to tell you where the merchants and nomads and necromancers will most likely spawn because they spawn basically in the corner of your villages. <laughs> Missed a jump. Let me hop up here. We're in creative. We'll just hop up here. Uh, okay, so you can see right here at the corner, it, it bends right here. So, like, this is the corner of a village here. So, merchants and nomads and things will spawn here and start to wander into town. And it does this all, and obviously, all four corners. So, pretty helpful. It's also going to help you, like, know where to, you know, when you're getting close to the edge, you don't want to place villages at the edge. What the heck? You don't want to place, uh, not villages, uh, structures at the edge of your uh, border because you know otherwise you might do something embarrassing like this and put a structure outside your village I mean that would be really really dumb right and finally finally the people have been asking for this one the, the patrons have been asking for this one forever villagers will finally finally remain and live in the same houses persistently so whoever sleeps in this house tonight for instance whoever owns these five beds here uh, they'll sleep in that bed every night. Even if I log out, log back in, come back tomorrow, leave the area, come back, whatever it is. They remember the house they sleep in. This guy here, Marcus Arun, he lives in this house, apparently. He's wandering around. He's getting happy in the house here. Uh, so, yeah, he may switch beds and stuff like that. They may, you know, maybe like, you know what? I want to sleep over here tonight. I want to sleep over here tonight. But the residents of the house will always remain the same. This is good. So now you can kind of get little families going. Okay, let's get a school in our village here. I think it's time. We have like 700 little hearts there. We need a lot of kids running around here. I got to decide where to put a school. Uh, I think I want to put it like right in this area here. I, one of the... I don't want to say regrets, but mismanagements, I guess you could say I did with my village, is I put things a little bit too far out away from the storage room. Everything is spread, like, way far apart. I was trying to, like, plan ahead and make lots of space and everything, and before I knew it, I planned too much. Everything got pushed out to the, to the side. So we're going to take the school, I think, and put it, like, right here. It will block the tree farm a little bit, but that's fine. It'll block a little bit of the storage room, but I think it'll block, like, this area here. So I think we'll do that, and then we got to get a teacher in here. Obviously, a school is... Completely useless without a teacher. I haven't seen a nomad in days, though, and I can't exactly have a kid grow up to be a teacher without teaching them to be a teacher first, so zzz, school first. School is in session, and look at all the hearts I've got. We got, we got a lot of the kids waiting here. We got tons of emeralds now with all the trades. So I've been trading like a lot of leather, a lot of wool, a lot of redstone, still a lot of food, a lot of lot. I mean, basically, I'm just diversifying my whole sales thing and everything. So, all right, here we go. Let's do, let's take those 64 emeralds out of there. And head over to the architect. Hey, I know which one is the architect now. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? <laughs> all right. Uh, 56 emeralds. Yeah, the price of all of my structures is going up quite a bit because of that kind of inflation system. The more things you buy, the more expensive they get. So, school, 56. All right, let me put emeralds away, and I'll show you what we got. There it is. I love this building. I like it for a lot of reasons. It's just, like, it's super cute. It doesn't, it, it looks a little different than all the other villagers made out of brick and stuff. I think it's fantastic. Perfect little size. Perfect little schoolhouse for a village this size. So, let me show you the inside here. Boom, we got, of course, got our chairs in here. So that, Can I fit into that? I can we got our little chair, so we can we can teach rate nine kids at a time here, which is quite a bit here. Teacher, you know, like we will come up here, teach the class and everything. This is going to be great. I cannot wait to get this going here. So, uh, there we go. School, well, school is not in session because we need a nomad to show up. Or, or I suppose I could just put a kid down and wait five days for them to grow up and everything. But I think I'm going to hold out and wait for a nomad to get my teacher going a little bit, and then all the kids are going to get spawned. I think, I think, nomads, nomads, bah. All right, well, while we wait for the nomads to show up, let's buy the teacher profession token anyways now, or is it the apple? Yes, and then I think while I'm here, another miner, another chef, no, I, I am thinking I might need another butcher, actually. Ever since I made the change where the butchers harvest, you know, more aggressively, I guess you could say, from the pens. Uh, I'm getting... They're, they're busy all the time. 
Do I want another butcher now, or do I want a druid? My miners, yeah, let's get let's get a druid. Where's a druid at? I need a druid. Where is he, Earth boy? Where are you? There you are. Uh, 19. Yeah, okay. I need another druid. Again, I know I haven't even covered the druid yet, but my mine shafts are just like all 900 miles long. I need a, I really need a druid to replenish them. Finally, 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 finally. Oh my gosh. I think it's been about eight or nine days since I've had a nomad. Hey, hey fool, Aldrew is Hayward. What's your, what's your game? You're a lumberjack. Okay, uh, not anymore. I mean, you like trees and all. Go, go make some earth. Go make some caves for me. And then we got another one over here. Where is he? There he is. There he is. There he is. All right. Come here, buddy. What's your name? <laughs> your name is... Wow. Z Zaid Zetherjill. Wow, that's a, that's a beautiful name. What's your, what's your gig, Zaid? What do you got going on? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, all right. That's, I'm okay with that, Zaid. You want to be the, uh, the, the educator of our system? There you go, Zaid. Look at this guy. Look at those fancy little glasses. Yeah, notice the detail. The glasses actually stick out from his face. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we got our teacher. We got our school. The marker is on the school. I think a new day just started or something. So I want to I wanna make, make it to babies here. There we go. So we're going to... I got like nine of these things. I'm going to use five of them now. Eh, who we got? We got John Shalabim. We've got... Oh, i got to switch over. We've got Ariella Kelmore. Beautiful. Love that name. And I thought, okay. And we got, let's see. Oh, wait. We've got Bear Trim Towerfall. And we've got Jonathan Silvergraft. I think we already have a Silvergraft in town. Hmm. So, yeah, the hearts are, the reason they're not stackable is because they do have data encoded in them about who their parent was so that the kids will have the same last name as the parent that made the heart so long ago. So we've got some kids now. Now let's see if this school thing works. Hmm, nothing so far. The kids are skipping right past the school. Where's our, oh, the teacher's right here. Hey buddy, what are you doing? The school, the time of day, it's, it's noon. Get those kids in school, start teacher rating. Okay, there he goes, he's in, he's in. He's teaching school. Let me see what his AI things are here we got. Craft name tag, which he can do. Read in library, teach school, and visit tavern. Everything a good teacher needs. Uh, so we have a crafting table here. He will craft name tags. That's just a custom recipe I added because I thought it was fun to have teachers craft name tags and to kind of make up for uh, villager trays not getting name tags. Uh, I think it's like two feathers and... Uh, two papers and a feather. Two paper and a feather. He will craft it during non-school. Oh, oh, here's our first. Oh, he's so happy. Oh, John Shalabalabam is just so sad to be going to school. Here he comes. Fine. I'll go to your stupid school. Learn about stuff. <laughs> All right, let's see if he raises his hand and asks the question. John, do some learning. Now, the teacher will be better. I'll, we'll get into all this in just a second, but the teacher can... There's kind of two ways of teaching. There's just what you see here, which is just the teacher is in school. There he goes. Oh, he just, he just got smarter. He just got smarter. Oh, intelligence went up to 22. Okay, so yeah, uh, children start with a good amount of intelligence. Now, he's actually a smart kid. Oh, uh, here comes someone else. Who we got? Who we got? It is... Bear Trim Towerfall. So yeah, like I was saying, there's two ways for... Oh, we got one in the back row there, too. Two ways for kids to learn. One is what you see right now, which is basically just like kids... Oh, he's raising his hand. Uh, the teacher's in school. The kids come into school. Look at them all filing. No, I love it. <laughs> It's so great. Um, and there's, it's basically a small chance for each individual kid to try to gain some intelligence, okay? Each time they raise their hands, that's kind of like them, they failed the role to gain intelligence. If they, if you don't see them raise their hands, like this kid just did right here, that means he, he succeeded his random role and uh, got another intelligence points. The real way now for uh, school to be taught is you need an enchanter to make books and the the uh, teacher will go pick up the books and then he'll kind of present the book to the side. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll get the enchanter going real soon here. Try to get the enchanter to make some books and then when he when the teacher raises a book up and consumes that book, everyone in the classroom will basically gains or at least gains an opportunity to gain an intelligence point. So it's really about having books for your teacher. That's the really big way to do it. So what is his skill? He's only like an eight, yeah. So we gotta make sure he goes up in skill. Uh, we're gonna need books though, but this is great. This is great. We got kids learning. 
All right, so I changed the time for the teachers and when they go to the library because the time most of the villagers go to the library very much overlaps with when the teacher, or, wait, or I should say when school is in session. Uh, so I made, so basically every villager has like a one in three chance, or I should say every third day they go to the library. I made it so the teacher tries to go to the library every day, but only for a short time after school is out. It kind of makes sense, you know, teachers, they're, they're bookworms, they like to read. Another big purchase coming up here. I have no idea how much this is going to cost. It's going to be crazy. We're going to buy another two house six or home six or whatever they're called. What is it? Where are these guys here? Home six. We're going to buy. Oh, she's 36. Oh, my God. Okay, we got one of those and some more of these over here. Two of those. Bam. Put these back in there. And let's head over because I just got done adding another... Uh, another one of those big giant multi-home things, a two-story, six houses, or six beds on top of six beds right over here. And it actually fit in really well. I had to do a little bit of landscaping, kind of like pull this side down here, but another beautiful home here. And it's really close, you know, good. They say, you know, location, 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 right? So here we go. I'm going to put some of those there, put another one of those there. Uh, we got this guy there. Light him up. Boom. Instantly the beds turn yellow, showing that they're available. And we're gonna do the same thing up here with the next one. Ugh. Lights up, yellow beds, love it. So, cause we were out, we were out of space. We've been growing so fast. Uh, yeah, so we just added 12 more potential villages. I still have this one over here. This was a four. I cheaped out on this one when this is actually, it can accommodate six. You can see these aren't even being registered here. It's just registering the four beds. I'm debating, I could put a six there, but then I don't know what to do with the four. Maybe I could jam, I could I could put four in one of my twos and just jam some beds in there. It'll be luxurious accommodations. Oh, 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 finally, finally another Nomad. It's like, it's getting, Nomads are not something you can rely on once your village gets to this size. And this isn't even a big village yet. This is still a pretty small village. But quick calculation, the way it works to figure out if you have a nomad or if you will get a nomad showing up that day, take the number of residents in your village, get the square root of that, and then that's kind of your chance of getting a, uh, a nomad. So I, I have crossed the 25 resident threshold now. Uh, where are you going? So square root of that is five. That means I have a one in five chance of getting nomads every day. And then the number you get is, I forget the calculation of that offhand, but yeah, they're not something you rely on, but that's okay because we are, we're relying more and more on children now and growing kids through the school. Um, but we got a, a Gabriela Valour. What a fantastic name. What do you got going on here? You've got a lumberjack and a bard. Oh, oh yeah. Our bard, by the way, there was, there was a spawnable square. Like where was it? Like right. One of these, I think it was like right here or something was spawnable and a little baby zombie decided to show up last night and decided to eat the face of our level 30 bard and we're not very happy with that. We're not very happy with that one bit. Uh, so we're bardless, we're bardless. We got to pick up a bard now. We really need another guard. Uh, we need a lot of things, we need a lot of things. Okay, but today we are getting an inch. Wow, enchanter, first one there, that was weird. Why is that first? I didn't remember that one being the first one. Anyways, 27 emeralds for an enchanter. This is definitely a top end villager. This is an end game villager, uh, but we need one. He's gonna start enchanting a lot of gear, which is gonna help all of our villagers because we're gonna have enchanted tools and weapons and armor. Yeah. But more importantly, we are going to have books. I know that sounds silly, that's more important, but it's gonna make our school super impressive, so. Slap that on there, and hello, Gabriela Valor. Get over here. Get over here. And Enchantress Gabriela Valor. So she's going to go work in the library now and start doing a lot of enchanting. Let's see. Hold on. What do we got here? What do we got? Hold still. I can't click on her. There we go. Okay. The enchants. Now check this out. Okay, so they can craft a book. They can craft paper, right? Those are the things we want to do. Look at all the enchants. They can enchant a book with a random enchant. All the diamond gear, all the iron gear, all the leather gear. They can enchant everything here. So this is pretty crazy. So I think what I actually want to do is turn all of this off for a little bit. And we're going to have her just create papers and books. I want to get a nice stockpile of books going so that, yeah, all that. So that's all off. Papers and books. Let them go because we want our teacher to be able to super teach. Okay, here she goes. She just made her first batch of paper. Um, actually, she should be making some books too. Isn't it? It should be the same as vanilla. So I think she should have made a book. I'm not sure. Maybe she's just dropping that off. Um, but look. 
Some of our kids are also growing up here, too. It's been like five days. We got Ariella Kelmore grew up with a 37 intelligence, which isn't bad. I think, oh, oh, another nomad. Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? Don't just showed up in the background there. Uh, 37 intelligence. Oh, two nomads. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it's like it's like Christmas morning here. <laughs> um, okay, so 37 intelligence is not bad for a brand new teacher, and I think we weren't all that great. Uh, we're having trouble with the grass. Okay, uh, but that's good. So we got some of the 37 intelligence there. Uh, we got to check out these nomads here and see what we got here. Maybe they have some decent skills to get started on. Chef and a cleric and a really crappy intelligence. Ugh. Nothing good there. Where's the other one? Where's the other one? Um, I turned all of my, uh, my miners off, by the way. Uh, I don't want them digging. I'm trying to get my druids a chance to regrow the earth down there. Where's the other nomad? Oh, we also have Bertram Towerfall. He has grown up as well, and he is a 45 intelligence with uh, some skills he picked up along the way. You can see now, uh, one of the things I added, I don't know if I remember this, mentioned this or not, but uh, whenever any villager skills up, any nearby children have a small chance of picking up that skill. So obviously being in school with a teacher, kids kind of learn how to be a teacher. But you can see they also picked up how to be a bard and how to be a little bit of farmer, which I think is a nice little touch. I like that. So kids can learn even outside of school. Who are you? You are Anya Armansi, and you are a lumberjack. 15 intelligence, not bad. All right, we got some work to do. Uh, who are you? Did I check you out already? I think I did. You're Oh, you're another one. Just grew up. 39 intelligence. Okay, so here's the deal. I, you are the one I just checked. Okay, I bought three tokens and they were not cheap. All right, we got another druid token. I need to get more. Uh, we have the bard to replace the bard we've lost and a guard token. So let me figure out who's going to be who here. All right, so one of the other great things I made, I really want kids in school to be the way to go. I really want it to be way better than Nomad. So one of the other things I did recently, and this is a huge change. It cannot be underestimated how powerful this is. Uh, when you have a nitwit here, a kid that has grown up into an adult but does not have a profession yet, okay? Whatever profession you assign them first, whatever their intelligence is, that will become their skill in that profession. So insanely huge. So Bertrand Towerfall, I can make him a level 45 whatever I want right now. And you can be a level 39 whatever you want. So let's go, uh, let's go Druid. Uh, Bertrand, or Jonathan Silvergraft, you sound like a Druid. Eh. So there we go. He's a, he should be a level 39 Druid. That's the power of education. Bertram Towerfall, you sound like a Bard. So let's Bard him up here. Eh. Okay. There we go. We have a new Bard now. Level 45 with the 45 Intelligence. Huge, huge head start. So this is great stuff. All right, I got a guard token here. Guards aren't that important right now. I don't think so. I, I think we're going to make this nomad here be... Why are you doing... Why are you busting these people's house? Huh? What'd they ever do to you? <laughs> She's going to become a guard right now. Bam. Juliana Hardy. I mean, with a name like Hardy, you got to be a guard, right? We're down to 31 emeralds total here. I want to... I think I want to get a guard. Did I already pass guard? Where's guard? Where's the sword? Where's the sword? I think I'm going to get another guard. I want to have three guards in my town. Oh, nothing's cheap anymore. Nothing is cheap. All right, we're going to do that, and then and then we got to save. I just I want to snag that extra nomad we got today. There she is. Enchantress making more paper. I'm really waiting for those books, though. I think books might be broken. Do I need, do I need, to, I need to look into books? Why are books not being made? All right, so I looked into it, and they'll actually craft books, but we need a certain amount of paper in storage beforehand. But the even bigger problem, though, is that we're not making enough leather. My butcher is just working nonstop now, just constantly bringing animals over. I had my butcher stop making leather armor now. Uh, so that we can start stockpiling the leather for the books. Uh, but I want to turn, I think I want to turn one of our, where am I? I went out the wrong door. <laughs> I hate when that happens. Uh, I want to turn one of my nitwits, and maybe it's going to be you right here, into a butcher, I think, because, oh no! Tavern fam! No, Tavern fam! Duh. Hopefully you're safe. Run like the wind, Tavern. Oh, did you see that warning pop up? He's taking down, no! Tavern, no! All right, I gotta go save him. I gotta go save him. Oh, he's gonna die. He's gonna die. Where is he? Oh, the guards are going to save him. Is he down? He's probably down in the mines. Let's see if he's down here. Take the express route. Where is he? The druids are down here working their magic. I got so many druids going now. Look at them all. Look at them all. Just regrowing that earth. Oh, Tavin, where are you? No! 
Oh, he's gonna die. Oh, he's gonna die. He's got like one more hit. I think he's upstairs somewhere. Oh, this is not good. Look at this. Die, stupid skeletons. My guards are not doing good down here. Oh, Tevin's like lost in these caves. Oh, okay, I found her. I found her. I have no idea how she got down in these caves. But it just goes to show the pathfinding system even works in the caves here. Come on. You can hop up. Yes, I know. Salute. You did a great job. Are you dying? Oh, you're, all, you're back up to full. Guards have regeneration, so she's fine. She's fine with her full iron armor and everything. Oh, good old Tavin made it back in one piece to share a drink with his friends. There we go. Finally making some books. I love it. You can see he's got like the that models book, not the, not the item book. I like that. Nice little touch there. Oh, leveling up and enchanting in the process. We're up to a seven. We did get one book that from non-villager leather, but we got two green books now. Excellent. Okay, three is that? Gonna deliver them, and hopefully, I think it might be time to start another session of kids and get the teacher teaching with some books. All right, let's do this. It is a brand new day. I want to maximize the amount of times that my kids can go to school. We have seven new hearts here we've collected, and it's time to unleash an army of little kids on this town. Here we go. Ugh. Spencer Aliar, we have Druella Fletcher, that's our second Druella. We have Wendell Hartman, and Lorelei Bookworm, and, oh, oh, they're being claimed. They did. They don't claim the one I click on, but they claim something in here. Uh, we've got Zach Z Silvergraft, we've got Vincent Bookworm, oh, we got brother and sisters, fantastic. And then, is that everyone in here? We got one more bed, okay. And Morgan Cascajaro. Excellent. Okay, now all these kids should be heading over to school. It's it's basically school time in a few minutes, so they should start heading over there. We should have a full schoolhouse today. Zaid Zethergill is in school, has three books. And, oh, here they come, here they come. The kids should start filing in. Yeah, there's kids over there, kids over there. I think they're all, here she's coming over. Yep, here they come. They're all coming to school now. Okay, let's see if he's going to do some teaching with books now. I want to see it. I want to see it, Zade. We're getting little bits of education here and there. We got, what do we got? One, two, three, four, five kids in here. I think another one's, there comes another one. And I think there's another one coming around the corner now. Zade, Zade is maximizing his book usage, I think. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. Look, he's teaching. Active teaching is happening. Oh, everyone just, why, wait a minute. Why did everyone just get... Why are they? Oh, they're all learning teaching because he learned teaching. That was crazy. I think that might be. Yeah, they're getting teaching skill way too fast. Way too fast. Yeah, they're already level four teachers. That might be a problem. I might want to, have to look into that uh, learning through proximity system I just put in. Oh, more book teaching. Oh, did you see everyone just gained some intelligence there? And it's not just one. I think they get, like, one and then, like, an extra bit of his skill. So they probably got, like, two or three for each of those book usages. Pretty crazy stuff. All right. I am happy. I am very happy then. All right. School is in session. Kids are learning. We've got an enchanter today who is making books. Next episode, we'll get the enchanter actually enchanting, you know, what they're named for. Uh, and I think we're also going to dive into the cleric and possibly the druid. I'm really trying to make like a druid miner army and really get tons of mining operations going on below. below. We might even set up a whole new mineshaft operation that's a little bit closer to the surface. Uh, we'll see. We have a lot to do here, but... I want to stress that this series is almost coming to an end. I think we're almost done with the content here. Uh, and that means the mod is getting very close to going public, okay? So hopefully one or two more episodes. And I'm pushing this thing live so that all of you can start playing it. So we're almost there, guys. We're almost there. The bugs are almost gone. I appreciate your patience. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.